Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today we're going to step out of Adobe Photoshop and into HTML and CSS. So we're going to focus today specifically on doing the HTML and CSS for the landing page. All right, so if you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com. Subscribe here on YouTube. And if you need access to any project files, they're available for free. All right, let's get started. Okay, so make sure you open up the very first mock-up we did. Mine's named homestep1.psd and uh, basically, we're going to be referring back to this uh, when we set up our HTML structure, okay? So, specifically speaking, the grid and the elements on here. All right, so in order to proceed, download the project file that is available uh, in the link. If you're on designcourse.com watching this, then it's already right there. You just click on download project files. There's a quick registration required. It's free, no big deal. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, the link to the page on Design Course where you can download this is in the description. All right, so once you have the zip file downloaded, go ahead and extract it. So I use an HTML editor, in, and that is right here. And this is called Sublime Text 2. It does cost money, I think like 60 bucks or something. But uh, you could use Notepad. You don't necessarily have to use this. As you can see, it's all just text-based. So don't freak out if you don't have it. It's not that big of a deal. But over here, it just uh, has the folder structure. And you know what you download will pretty much look like this for this index.htm file. Um, we want to change the title here real quick to whatever your site name is, if you did register one. Uh, Butterful. Uh, save your money and barter, you know, whatever. And uh, just real quickly, I didn't bother showing you guys me typing out all this stuff. This is all very basic. You know, it starts out with an HTML tag. Everything goes inside those two tags. And then the next element always is the head tag. And it just has different uh, mated tags in here. It has the title, which shows up on the browser uh, title or bar or whatever of the window. And then we have right here linked is a CSS. And I screwed up. It's not 1140px.css. It's just 1140, as you can see right here. So make sure you make that change, otherwise it won't work. And then for our font, our web font, Source Sans Pro, it's just linked right here as well. All right, so basically the way we want to get started, and by, by the way, if we check out 1140.css, you know, this is from the website 1140px.com, and you could download everything here as well. Uh, so basically it shows you, uh, this is a, a very simple, minimalistic, responsive framework. So when we're talking about responsive web design, basically it means that we can use a single uh, CSS file, an HTML file, that will work on multiple viewport widths or device viewport widths. So it'll work on, it'll automatically adapt to, uh, like if you're viewing on a phone, the layout will adapt if it's on a, uh, like a lap or a, uh, what do you call, like an iPad or something, uh, or a tablet. So. Uh, over here, it just gives you some just very basic classes right here, and I will describe describe and you know explain these as we go along. All right, so basically, uh, the first thing we want to do is just type in div class equals container twelve. So just like that, and then we'll end it just like that. All right, so basically, this container twelve. This is just like a div that's uh, or a class container twelve that's specified in eleven forty dot CSF. So you just don't have to really worry about it. But basically, what that is is if we turn on these grids. This means this div, this container is going to be the width of twelve of these uh, columns. So that's all we have to worry about for that. And let's go back here, and inside of it, we want to put header, which is an HTML five tag header. And because we're going to be writing the, H or the HTML specifically for this top portion. Okay, so let's go back over here. Now what we want to do is put in div class equals row. And this is also something that's predefined in that 1140.css file. Basically, you use div class row whenever you have two or more floating elements. So I... Uh, the way I was thinking of doing this, and I hope I, I didn't do the CSS. I haven't done this project beforehand, so I'm just gonna hope you know there may be an issue where I have to readjust the HTML once we get to the CSS part. But I, uh, if we go over here, we could see that this is basically one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Um, I'm not sure. Seven. You might, what I might do is just make this uh, seven columns, and then this one will be five, and I'll just right align both of these, and we'll hope it works once we scale the uh, browser in for the responsive portion. So I'm just going to do that real quick. I mean, if, if this wasn't here, I would just center this image, but I, I'm not going to – this is over here as well. So what I'll do is I come back over here, div class equals column seven. And that's also pretty fine, 1 through 12 in that 1140.css. All right. And inside of that, we'll go ahead and put ahref equals my website address, which is barterful.com. You can put yours if you registered one. And then image source equals images forward space. We'll just call this logo.png. Usually I save the images out first, but... Nah, I kind of forgot. It's no big deal. You don't have to do things in a certain way. But yeah, we will be saving that logo uh, as a logo.png. And uh, let's continue on. After this, we have div class equals column 5. So when it comes to these column containers, you want to make sure they always add up to five, or 12. So we got 7 and 5, so that's 12. And now in here, we want to have an unordered list for the navigation, a UL. And we'll put in our one link, href equals, actually, we'll put forward slash login. And a login here, a, close the li as well, the list item. All right, very simple. Okay, so now we have that portion done. That is all the HTML that's required for this up here, basically. All right, so now we have to worry about the next element, which is right here, a very simple piece of text. So let's go ahead and come over here. I'm going to put h1. We're going to give it an ID. That way we can reference it in the CSS and control the margin because there's quite a bit of margin from above it and the header above it. All right, so we'll put in ID equals home. And I'll put need something someone might want to barter close the tag all right and then the very next thing we have is this form right here so we have to add some form uh, html form tags so let's go back here all right so form action equals we're not going to send it to a specific script so we're just going to leave that blank because it's going to submit to itself and then at the top here once we get to the php uh, we'll put the PHP code up there. All right, so action equals uh, blank, and then method equals post. And that will just post the data from the form. And let's close that. And then inside, I'm going to put an empty div, and that's going to be used to put any type of uh, error signs, uh, like if a person didn't fill out all the three forms or fields, then we'll put in uh, some PHP right in here that will basically echo that. All right, so let's go down here. So now because these all float to the right of each other, Wait, where'd that go? Oh, well, I don't have to worry about that too much. I'll find it. Uh, because all these three these three elements float, we're going to put div class equals row. Close it, and then come inside. And this is going to be div class equals. Now, here's just where we have to refer back, get the grid out. This first text box is four width, so it's column equals four. The next one, I believe, is five. Yep. And then this last one's three. So those all add up to 12. Let me just take this real quick. Paste it two times. This is five, and this is three. Very simple. All right, so inside is where we actually put the uh, HTML code for our two text box and button. So. Let me see here. It's going to be input type equals text. That means it's going to be a text field as opposed to like a drop down or something. Class, we're going to give it a class of large-fld. 
and that just means large field and name equals we're gonna put I uh, I need because that's the one where they specify what they need or want value equals nothing and then placeholder equals I need this so placeholder is a tag that allows you to put in that initial grayed out text right here all right so let me can come back over here I'm gonna copy this real quick we'll put uh, we'll keep everything the same except um, I offer I'll change that name and what was that text I can offer this okay All right, and then over here we're gonna have our button. So that's input type equals submit class equals large FLD name equals uh, I'm just gonna make that step one, and then class. Oh, okay, one second, I screwed up. We're gonna give it two classes, large dash magnify. So that will give us the uh, little magnifying glass image as well. And then we'll put in value equals find matches. Oops. Oops, there we go. All right, so just about done. And let's see here. Now we just have this little portion right here. And it's just some text, so I'm going to come back here and put that in. And so this will be outside of the form, but it's inside of this div, uh, the closing, what do you call it, uh, container 12. And so we'll just put P for paragraph tag, and we'll give it, uh, we can give it an ID or a class. I'm just going to give it an ID of uh, uh, what was this text for anyhow. Okay, so I'm just going to put it uh, home-info. And then I'll copy that text. Let me hide this real quick. All right, and come back. And go ahead. Go ahead and close this. And because we had those three being green, uh, these examples basically will put a span tag and we'll be able to reference that in CSS. Oops. All right, so I, uh, all right, so far so good. So I, uh, let me save this. Now, if we were to go ahead and view what this looks like in the browser, it looked terrible, but let's just do it anyways. I'm gonna go to open containing folder double click on that and this is what it looks like without any images although there's only one anyway um, and CSS applied so you know it basically have the idea and so as you can see as we pull this browser in things kind of naturally line up and that's based on that 1140 CSS okay so and of course we will have to make adjustments to that specifically once we have the CSS done for just a large view uh, right here. So yeah, everything, this is how it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like crap without CSS, uh, but the CSS, once we do that, that's where the magic will come in. Now, unfortunately, it's late. It's like 8.45 p.m. I have two toddler daughters, and my wife just yelled at me and said, I have to get done because the one's getting tired, and I always have to watch the younger one <laughs> while the other one goes to sleep. So uh, I'm going to have to end it here. I would have liked to get a little bit longer today. I know this is probably a little bit annoying if you're one of the individuals who have been following along day by day because it seems like we don't get too much done. But, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, anyhow, so tomorrow what we'll do, to, just so that we can have a little bit of a payoff, we'll focus on the CSS and really make this end up looking like this and then maybe we'll also get the second step done as well all right so i'm gary simon check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet and subscribe here on youtube all right goodbye